So yesterday at the end of the demo, I did something and I did it really fast and I wanted to kind of go over it again really short. So just for like four or five minutes in this demo um, to just kind of eliminate the possibility of any major mistakes. And what I did yesterday is I've got my little running guy here. Okay, he's off the stage for now, but we'll just ignore that for the time being. Um, and uh, I added, I made him into a symbol, right? And, and uh, encapsulated him in a symbol, and then I added a motion tween to the symbol, and I made him run across the screen, right? Remember that? And all of you guys went, oh. It's like the first time you had that little moment in a demo in a long time. But it was cool, because you guys all went, oh, cool. So there are some problems that you need to avoid with adding uh, inverse kinematics layer into the symbol. And the biggest one is you must make sure that you select everything. So if I just hit Command A, that selects all. That's the best thing to do. And here's why. It has to do with these invisibles. If I just draw a box, right, that'll select everything too. But what if I start the box here? Notice now that invisible has not been selected. Here's what happens if you miss one. Ready? So I'm going to right click. We're going to convert to symbol. I'll just label OK. Now, everything looks hunky-dory, but it's not. If I double click on this, look what happened to my animation. All that work I did is gone. If I click on my guy with the black arrow tool, the selection tool, all the bones are gone. So the lesson that I want you to learn from that right there is if you create a symbol with your running guy and you accidentally miss one of the limbs or one of the invisibles, or more than one, doesn't matter, but one's all it takes. If you do that, what ends up happening is it deletes all the bones. And therefore, it also deletes all your animation, all the poses that you made in the inverse kinematics layer. So it's really, really, really important that when you copy him into a, or you make a symbol out of this guy, that you get everything. So I'm going to undo here. <clears throat> Okay. Now I'm going to make sure I get all of the symbols. See, we got all the invisibles in or invisible object symbols in here, and everything's done. And again, Command A, that just does it. Select all, done. And now I go and convert to a symbol. It looks exactly the same on the outside, but when you double click into the symbol, now you can see my animation is still there and still going. That's really, really key. Does that make sense? And now I can do um, what I showed you yesterday, and that is take our guy, <clears throat> move him here, add a motion tween, go to the end of the motion tween, let's make it 60 frames, and have him run across, okay? And then let's build our animation. When you, just, when you scroll through here, you won't see the inverse kinematic animations running inside the symbol, but as soon as you test the scene, command enter, now all of a sudden we see our, our scene or our, our double animation running, our nested tweens, okay? Which is why I had you doing that whole nested tween thing in the very first assignment when we were doing the five basic ways of making an animation move, okay? This, this is why, as I was preparing you for this right here, being able to do this animation, okay? Now he's moving a little slow. His run is a little slow for the amount of ground he's covering. We're gonna talk about that in the next demo, okay? So we can adjust the speed and so on and so forth um, <clears throat> very easily, but we'll talk about that in a second, okay? But are there any questions about this? No? All right. Close that. <clears throat> 